Hey, hey guys. Yeah, today a little bit of spicy content. I mean, what means spicy, but I guess a lot of the discussions are going on at the moment about who is the strongest DPS, who is the second strongest, what about Unholy DK, will Retribution Paladin is getting better, what about the Warriors and Feral Druids, Copium, stuff like this. I mean, you know what's going on um, today. I record the video on the 11th of January. Maybe we'll see it one day later. We finally got the announcement for Ulduar. So phase two is starting next week. Ulduar is releasing on Thursday next week, the 19th of January. Um, everybody's waiting for it. Everybody's cheering for Ulduar. All my friends, all my former guildmates, current guildmates, all the rough OGs uh, told me, hey, this raid is one of the best raids ever released. I also hear a lot of good things about ICC what is coming up for us in the future but Ulduar is definitely seems like one of the peak moments from World of Warcraft and we will have it next week so I guess a lot of people are now what should I play everybody has an all character or maybe even a third character so maybe you want to figure out not right now yeah it's maybe a little bit late to make a decision but maybe you are like, hey, you have, you have two completely equipped characters. My raid lead already asked me, hey, if I could swap over to Warlock from Mage and stuff like this. And today I want to talk about it. What you see here is, first of all, an empty tier list. And what you also see here on the left is the old Naxxramas tier chart I would say this is I mean these are numbers so the numbers are not lying and as you can see it's unholy DK on first place affliction warlock and so on and so on and so on today I want to talk now over the tier list I will start with the D tier I try to say one or two sentences to every spec not too much not too less I don't want that the video is going like one hour maybe not even 30 minutes maybe not even 20 minutes I will see but now I will start with the D tier for sure, let me know your opinion, discuss it in the comment uh, comments, uh, definitely I'm open-minded for getting criticized or that you guys think like, hey, that's kind of correct. Alright, perfect, let's start with the D tier. D tier are also two specs that makes just no sense to play because two other specs of these classes are doing pretty awesome, they are A and S tier. So uh, that's why it makes no sense to go here for Subrogue and Frosted Mage. Explanation, like I said, makes no sense to play them. Subrogue is super strong in PvP, a lot of CC, a lot of mobility, but damage output, especially after the super short burst phase, is very close to zero. Don't get me wrong. If you are a super casual raid, if you just want to go in a puck raid, you could play it, but it makes at the end, like I said, no sense because anyways, you are a melee character, your other two specs are not changing your playstyle, like maybe in a survival hunter, but you are just doing much, much, much less damage than combat rogue and assassination rogue. Same is for Frost uh, Mage, yeah, the playstyle is not changing so much, you are still a ranged DPS, a caster. But Frost Damage is doing so much more worse than Arcane Mage and Fire Mage. So please just don't think about it. Don't play Frost Mage in Phase 2 Ulduar. Besides, in PvP or maybe leveling or whatever if you like the spec. Let's come to the C tier. And maybe in the C tier is already something that we have discussions about. First I want to put Beastmaster Hunter. Why? Again here a little bit explanation like, like the D tier before. This spec makes just not a real sense to play it. To be honest, <coughs> in all my now raiding weeks in Axramas, and I don't know how many weeks we had, six, 16, I think, 16 or 17? 15, 16, 17 weeks. Um, yeah, for sure, I was mostly raiding with, with a guild, mostly with very serious guilds. Um, but I also were in some pack raids, especially with my old character. and. I think I cannot even remember sawing a Beastmaster Hunter. So Beastmaster Hunter just makes no sense like, like I told you before on the other specs. So don't go for it. You have much, much better specs or you have m better specs 
as a hunter. Second one is Arms Warrior. So we come to the first warrior spec. Also here makes no sense, you have a better spec as a Fury Warrior. Arms is the PvP spec. Awesome in PvP. Definitely if you like PvP, play arms there. Awesome spec for this, not for raiding. Quick, quick story. Sadly, we are coming now to the first class that has no other spec, but Retribution Paladin is not doing good at the moment. It will not do good. It will not do much better in Uldura. Why? First of all, nothing big is changing for Retribution Paladin. Yes, he gets better gear, like every class, true. But also you know that uh, he has some scalings fighting against unholies. Um, uh, undead, sorry, unholies. <laughs> fighting against undeads. So, um, and he's losing this because in Uldor is nothing. I'm not 100% sure, but I think there's a lot of nothing uh, undead. So yeah, definitely Paladin is not going into a better state. Uh, for sure, don't get me wrong. It will not do less damage because of the better gear, but the damage output of the Retribution Paladin will not really change. Otherwise, I can tell you, you can still have a spot in many guilds why you bring a lot of um, you bring a lot of utility with you, especially also buffs that you that you bring with you, and also what is maybe important, yeah, as a Retribution Paladin, maybe in the first few weeks you can also fill a spot like maybe you need a tank here more, maybe you need for one fight six healers, but on the other fights only five healers, so you go from holy to, to retribution, just as an example. So don't get me wrong, Paladin overall will see spots, two Pala heals will get will be pretty normal, I guess. Pala tank, pretty normal. So why not another Retribution Paladin? So not a bad time for Paladin players at all. But Retribution Paladin, I don't know. Not a quite fun. Next spec, we're coming already to the B tier. Now we start with specs where I would say completely fine. You can even have two of them in your raid if you want. I think it makes no sense to have three of them or maybe stack them even higher. Makes not a lot of sense damage wise so you will just make it a little bit hard for yourself but apart from this the bt is the best specs are already fine damage classes they are just missing something or they're just missing some damage that they are not s or a tier all right let's go destruction warlock also here's my explanation makes no sense to play it if you have other two specs doing much more damage also the playstyle is not changing a lot so stay away from destruction warlock as you can see he's he's here at the moment uh, i think you can rank this also as b tier here maybe high b tier i don't care where you want to put it here in the b tier so in between the lines i don't make exact ranking because also that's super high but destruction warlock if you're not <laughs> At all time destruction warlock player then just go for affliction or the monology without, without doing much more damage all right we come to fury fury warrior fury warrior is definitely doing better in ulduar than in naxramas in naxramas they were tied to 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 um Ret retribution paladins now they will do much better i can even expect them at the end of phase two so with most or maybe with all of the phase two bis gear that um yeah that sorry that uh fury warrior will be high b tier or very very low a tier it's something that I can definitely give them in full Uldor Abyss at the start of Uldor, collecting just, you know, two, three, four items. I think they are at the B tier. Medium, maybe low B tier. Kind of the same is counting for Marksman Hunter. It's already doing quite well. You also have some buffs that you bring to the group that you that you that you have a usage if if you want to play marksman. Uh, you are ranged. You can cast most things, uh, yeah, from range. Like I said, um, overall a good spec. Definitely bringing one marksman hunter is not bad. Bringing two, 
why not BTS specs are definitely able to have two in the raid especially if you have two very good player on that spec next one is shadow shadow priest shadow priest also overall a very uh, very fine dps class they bring important buffs to the raid group like for example the hit for is it for caster only i'm not sure sorry about that i know the class is very bad and i'm not structuring a raid but you know some classes bring some special buffs so definitely uh oh we can look it here up sorry missy shadow priest vampiric touch no that's not uh doesn't matter now sorry for that overall a good class especially keep here in mind that um yeah that you bring here as well the opportunity with you that you can make a little bit of heal and good damage or you can even swap to make heal and a little bit of damage like as a dc priest or whatever so it's definitely possible that you are important in a raid first of all in the few first few weeks where definitely some bosses will require more heal you know in Raxramas at the end was two or three man heal completely normal so um, we will see five or six healers in my opinion in Uldura in the first few weeks on many fights but some will not require this so as a shadow priest you have a good spot especially if you are able to swap between heal and damage elemental shaman yeah, what should I say? Um, also, as you can see here, these classes are also here kind of together. Shadow Priest, Marksman, Shape Hunter and Elemental Shaman. Uh, Elemental Shaman is the problem. He has a very nice burst that also makes him so strong in PvP. But he's lacking definitely on DPS over time. So, yeah, he falls after the, the burst. is not that much going on anymore. Also has not a best scaling from through items, but definitely Elemental Shaman will benefit from shorter boss fights at the end of the exp at the end of the phase. So that's good for Elemental Shamans, but just at the start, I think uh, they will not be the best. Also not the second best. Don't get me wrong, but definitely have a space, a spot. Uh, so one, why not? two i don't see reason why to bring two but again on btr already would say is definitely discussable if you say uh, worth a discussion if you say bring the player not the class if it's not like four or five or whatever of this of these specs last but not least feral uh, i put here feral on the top of the b tier but don't get me wrong that doesn't mean that i see them as top of the b tier um I think they will be kind of um, medium, but let, 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 them, let them hear. I think especially with more gear, with more armor penetration gear and with tier set bonus, they can do well on certain fights. So B tier, why not? But don't get me wrong, also here is no reason to bring more than one into the raid. One is especially good because of the ability to tank and make DPS on some fights, and maybe even if your if your if your if your druid player is very good, maybe in progress. I will talk about progress in Uldra, especially with the hard modes. Um, many many guilds will not clear Uldra hard modes in the first week, just walking in like in Axramas. So Feral Druid will definitely be helpful classes, especially if you can switch around the specs of Druid. That could be very, very important for you as a Druid player to have a spot. If yes, then you will have an awesome opportunity to have a spot because Feral Druid already fine, but with the priority that you can bring to a raid, awesome. Let's start with... Uh, a tier in a tier i would say we talk really already about uh, the tier that there is no reason to not bring here two or three class at two or three players of that spec especially if they are very good players they are reliable like they mean they are coming with like 100 percent attendance to your raid there is 
definitely no reason if you are not super into parsing or super into speedrunning, have invested in those two things that you are not bringing maybe more than one of those specs. There's no reason to not doing that. I put here balance through it first. Balance through it also here. Yeah, um, they were doing now very well at the end of Naxxramas. I think they will do a little bit less good at the start of Uldua. Why? Because kind of the same issue that um, Elemental Shaman has, but just overall balance through it is the better spec. They are more heavy into blasting. That means yeah, bursting. Um, they cannot have the same damage over a long boss fight, so they definitely have a little bit of a downfall at the end of a fight, especially at the start when they maybe go like three and a half minutes or something like this. Balance Druids are shining in the boss fights that are like 130 or less or shorter, I would say. Also depending a little bit on the boss fight, if it's if range is very benefited then for sure they can do even more well. But I would put them at the moment in low A tier, but definitely they have good potential to rise, especially at the end of the phase. Next one is Enhancement Shaman. So Shaman has a very good uh, DPS spec. Elemental Shaman okay, but Enhancement Shaman definitely very good. You can even bring easily two into your raid group, there's no problem about it. And as you can see, same was here in Axramas. Uh, with Enhancement Shaman, so I would say they are kind of at the same place. Uh, we will see how this is developing through the through the complete expansion, but at the moment I still see them in a very, very good A tier spot. I put between Fire Mage. Why I put them between? Because Fire Mage is definitely not good, not, not so good at the moment. But they will rise with the gear and all these things. They have a ve they have very good pieces that they can collect. So we will see Fire Mage rising during Ulduar. Not into the S tier, but at the moment, as you can see, Fire Mage is here. What is very, very clear B tier, here in my opinion. Very close to Elemental Shaman and those things. And they will rise, I think, kind of to the top of the A tier. I will put them now low A tier but with a potential to high AT or maybe even low S tier, depending on how short will be the fights and all these things. So this is something that we have to see later on then. All right, next spec is Survival Hunter, already doing pretty good. As you can see, they are also here connected with all these specs. Survival Hunter, overall a good, overall a good spec. If you have good hunters, you can bring two, it's no problem. Uh, that they are, yeah, uh, melee is maybe not the best for some boss fights in Ulduar, so not sure if you are stacking already rogues and DKs, if you should still also stack survival hunter, but yeah, why not bringing here one or two, definitely overall a very good spec. Last but, uh, not last but not least, I want to put here now two together, Arcan Mage and Frost DK. Both specs already pretty strong, so they will get better in my opinion overall. Frosty case especially good also when we talk about trash damage, so for speed running. And Arcan Mage is good at the moment, or maybe even very good. I think you can also say that at the moment, as you can see, it's the uh, sixth best spec that they are already very low S tier. Uh, I put them in high A tier. Why? Because, like I said, pretty, pretty good spec. There's no need. If you have good mage players, you can bring two or three. Why not? Uh, but I also think that maybe at the end of the P2, really at the end, full P2 bis, maybe one or two pieces missing, this could change in that way. That fire mage is doing better than Arcane. That is definitely possible in my opinion. Alright, we come to the final specs. Um, S tier, very good specs. They will get stacked, especially two or three of these specs will get stacked. What means stacked? 
uh, it will be no rarity that you see five, six of these classes of this spec in a raid because they do awesome damage, boss fight, trash DPS, also for speedrunning important, and so on and so on. They all also all have a good scaling in my opinion. Um, that makes them also that there's nothing changing through P2 Ulduar. But uh, yeah, let us start. I think I want to start here with Combat Rogue. Uh, I rank them as the lowest S tier spec at the moment. With full P2 gear, maybe they come super close to the next Rogue spec, Assassination Rogue. But at the moment, you know they are a little bit weaker than, than Assassination, especially in boss fights. And this will continue through Uldua, but also Uldua has some um, more than one target boss fights, definitely. And like I said, Combat Rogue has overall, through uh, Wrath, the better scaling. So it could be a time, end of P2, where this is already starting. The single target DPS fight is from if you are looking some damage charts or also if you look on the on, on the sheet of Simon Eyes, for example, the, the rogue expert, a rogue professor, I would, would really call him. Um, I think the difference was 2.5% damage single target with full phase two gear. So not a big thing. Next spec that I would hear is the first uh, Warlock spec. The Monology Warlock. Um, very good, but Affliction Warlock is so good that there is no reason to have more than one Demo Warlock for the buff. But like I said, still very good. Um, the Demo Warlock. So, but again, here also, like I said, more than one spec is uh, more than one is not necessary. If you have somebody that says, hey, I only play this big spec, favorite of all time. I don't want to play anything else. Let him. It is a very, very good spec, but Affliction Warlock is just doing better here. Now we come to the top three. The top three are not really changing from Naxxramas, I would say. Or what means the top three? As you can see, it would be the top four, if you like, or even the top five. They are not really changing. What is changing is a little bit uh, the positions. And now I would rank Assassination Rogue here. Awesome spec with Fell Striker and the AoE spec. Also very nice trash DPS. You have tricks. You can. You have also good things like Evasion, Shadow of Cloak. So you can live through some things that other people would die on. Overall, a very well-rounded spec and class. Uh, awesome, like I said, single target damage. Also okay, uh, like I said, AoE target damage. And I'm not talking about if it's 50 targets, okay, then it's godlike. But also if you have like three, four targets, a few fan of knives would be possible or you focus just on one target. So Assassination Rogue will do very well. You will see them stacked in some raids. I think it's no problem to bring three assassination rogues with you especially now with the little bit of downfall of unholy decay anyways i think i would still rank if you want to have here ranking i think i would still rank unholy decay above assassination rogue maybe that's a mistake uh, i did not make the biggest worst research on the data from the ptr this weekend on exactly this topic but yeah they lost their <laughs> I mean look at this if you cut it here you can see that the specs here are very well balanced I mean the difference from I'm not exactly sure but I think I would kind of say the difference from this spec affliction to this spec is nearly the same difference from unholy dk to affliction so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine specs are in the same range than unholy dk was before so unholy dk will or is receiving a massive nerf don't get me wrong they lose a lot of damage but they were so over the top especially on single target boss fights especially 
now at the end of Naxxramas on short single target boss fights that they were so overwhelming for everybody else. There were on parsing guilds or maybe even on some speedrun guilds 10 to 15 unholy DKs stacked. What is completely crazy and Blizzard wanted to prevent this with the change that they made. Last but not least, top notch, top G, Affliction Warlock. Affliction Warlock will be the new Unholy DK. That's pretty sure. Already the people were cheering for Affliction Warlock coming to P2 before Unholy DK got nerfed. The people were already predicting the longer fights and the, the better scaling, I would say. Whereby you can argue about this because the scaling that Unholy DK would have if the haste thing would stay the same with the gargoyle of the Gary then uh, you could definitely argue about this but now it's definitely Affliction Warlock has the better scaling Affliction Warlock is doing better in longer fights so through all P2 I will I see top DPS Affliction Warlock please what we will not see, and that's the very good thing, we will not see raid groups. I mean, I hope I don't not change it now, but I think we will not see raid groups with 15 affliction warlocks. We will not see this. This is my opinion. Um, we will see what what's going on later on in speed run and passing runs. But at the moment, I think they made here a very nice balance because we are done here with the tier list. So I just want to give you a super quick overall look up. We have a very big SN8 here. I mean, if you count that specs together, we have here 11 specs, 11 DPS specs. Um, besides, I mean, Feral Druid, they have the benefit to be able also to tank or even swap, uh, swap the spec completely to heal on some boss fights or to make balance Druid on some boss fights. But also here is a Druid spec, so... Uh, I think besides Warrior that they have no spec here, Shadow Priest, but they have also the opportunity to 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 look for to go for heal on some fights. And Retribution Paladin for Paladin, we have every class has a spec in S and A tier. Um, that is that that is good. That that is very good. That's what we all want to see, to be honest. Um, yes, some guilds, top parser, top speedrunner. They will stack some certain specs of certain classes, but apart from this, S and A tier, very well rounded, B tier just a little bit behind the A tier specs, and only the C and D tier specs, why I would say no need to bring them. But then here again, Retribution Paladin has his upsides, it benefits. He brings buffs, or he can swap to tank or to heal if it's necessary. That's it guys for today. Um, I hope you got some infos about everything as you can see here also on the left with the uh, comparison to Naxxramas nothing big is changing but I think the game will overall be more balanced because DK gets back to, to a point that is around here and some classes will go a little bit more into this direction so overall very nice tea in front of us i'm super happy and excited about it i hope you guys as well i would appreciate if you like subscribe or comment see you guys bye bye